Hey there, folks. It is a, a, a pretty sizable trade for the Vancouver Canucks uh, coming here at about five o'clock on a Tuesday, right before the Canucks take on the Ducks. And it is moving on from Anthony Bavillier, uh, who was a key piece brought in uh, for Bo Horvat. Uh, it was Horvat for a first, which the Canucks went uh, on and flipped for Philip Hronik. They also threw a second in there, which gets overlooked a little bit. Uh, Atu Ratu, who is uh, working it out in the minors. Uh, and Anthony Bavillier. And at the time, we you know, we sort of looked at Anthony Bavillier as, oh, a nice, hey, you got a nice uh, sort of a decent winger that you can maybe flip uh, for some value. He's a, you know, 40 point guy, maybe 50 point guy. And uh, hasn't really worked out. I mean, last year he was decent, 20 points across 33 games, and he's just 26 years old. And, you know, we're thinking, hey, you know, he actually might be a pretty decent winger for this team. However, coming into this season, we knew... To be frank, the Canucks had too many wingers, right? there, And it's felt like they were going to have to get rid of one of Brock Besser, Connor Garland, Anthony Bavillier, yada, yada, yada. Well, they decided not to get rid of Brock Besser, which has worked out fantastically. Obviously, he's tied for the league lead in goals. Connor Garland's been okay, uh, nothing too special, and he could step it up. But Anthony Bavillier, I mean, we're talking about a guy who, you know, peaked at 39 uh, points in 68 games back in 2019-2020. A 40-point guy plays a whole season. Maybe that's 45 points. Very serviceable, high third, low second line caliber player. And in his time this year in Vancouver, we're talking eight points in 22 games. Just two goals is the big one. And if you if you remember where these two goals came from, they were in that 10-1 win over the San Jose Sharks. And he got goals 9 and 10. So the least meaningful two goals uh, we may have ever seen in an NHL uh, season. Um, and uh, genuinely just has not been a fit. Um, and what that's resulted in is, if you take a look at Cap Friendly, he's got a pretty chunky $4.15 million cap hit and becoming a UFA next year. A player that the Canucks seemingly wouldn't want to retain. Um, and, and the Canucks genuinely have winger depth if need be. Uh, where their depth really is lacking is on the defensive end. So clearing out this $4.15 million uh, and essentially losing a player who, like we like we said, really hasn't been producing for the Canucks and at that at that cap, cap hit, you got to produce, right? Um, so what that'll do is it'll take $4.15 million off the books in which the Canucks are at, uh, you know, they're in LTIR. Let's see if we can get up here. So projected cap space is zero. Current cap space is 1.5 million, yada, yada, yada. Uh, but they're four and a half million dollars into LTI. This move essentially takes them out of LTI, uh, which they have six and, uh, you know, six point something million dollars in, um, and, and gives them a lot of room to maybe bring a piece in, right? It frees up a roster spot. Uh, we've seen that, you know, Phil Giuseppe was supposed to be out of the lineup tonight. He will now probably slot in. Um, and the Canucks get a fifth round pick in return. Does a fifth round pick matter? No, not really. However, what did they trade a fifth round pick for earlier this year? Sam Lafferty, Sam Lafferty, who I think has been uh, an absolute stud for the Canucks so far. Uh, and, um, you know, Hey, if we can get guys like that for fifth round pick, if they can weaponize that, uh, to get a defenseman or who we've all been long awaiting Ethan bear really seems like a, a guy who obviously doesn't need this whole cap hit, but could take a chunk of it. And, uh, and really help this team. Now, Ethan Bear is probably not going to be uh, coming in until uh, late December, um, but he is skating, and obviously the Canucks are who he's rumored to end up on. Um, so where does that leave the Canucks right now, right? You take Pavilia out of the lineup here, uh, and we sort of go back to you know the top two lines that we were used to at the beginning of the year, which would be Phil Giuseppe, JT Miller, Brock Besser. I don't think PDG slots in there right now, maybe, um, but either way, just for depth's sake, uh, Mikheyev, Patterson, Kuzmenko was your top line. And then honestly, removing Anthony Bavillier, your bottom six still looks pretty good, right? You still have Bluger, Joshua Garland as that third line. And keep in mind, when Pew Suter comes back, eventually he'll slot into that role. And then your fourth line, you have Hoaglander and Lafferty with Neil Zoman. And then in the future, Teddy Bluger, once Pew Suter comes back. So assuming everyone's healthy, I mean, it's really not a huge hit to the lineup, especially the way Bavillier has been producing uh and again the the issue is really where the defensive side uh comes into play but look even if the Canucks get more injuries to their bottom six having Bavillier you know over a guy like Vasily Podkolzin even or Linus Carlson who we've seen get a little bit of play time it's probably not a, a major difference however that four million dollars of cap space that you can now use to maybe pick up a defenseman like Ethan Bear uh, or someone else 
I think the Canucks are going to get a lot more value out of that. Either way, though, a uh, pretty quick one for you. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Um, I'm totally good with it. Cap, cap relief is good. <laughs>